Various large companies based here, for example, car and ship manufacturers, and tourism plays a big part in the coastal economy. Wait, what? Is that a beach? You guys have beaches. What's up, guys? It's Dwayne back again for another video, back in for the reaction. Today's a great, wonderful, amazing day because it's a Germany day. Northern Germany meet the Germans road trip, part one. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction. Let's go. Moin. Hey. Moin. 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 Welcome oh, to the moin. first leg of our Meet the Germans road trip. And as you might have guessed from those greetings right there, we're up north. According to the Happiness Atlas, this is where many of the happiest Germans live. That doesn't necessarily mean that you'll feel the happiness oozing out of them. Do you know what's funny? Northern in England as well is exactly the same thing. Northerners tend to be happier than Southerners. It's exactly the same. If you go to Northern England, people are very, very friendly and very, very, they, they come across very happy and very bubbly and very, hello, how are you? How's it going? And whether <laughs> Southerners and Londoners are a bit more like stone face. So maybe it's the same in Germany, that's interesting. The Northerners are known for their cool approach and for being people of few words. Same Mornings in England. actually mean morning. It's thought to come from the low German for good, and it can be used as a greeting at any time of day. You might also hear moin moin, but in some areas that's thought to be over the top. For our jaunt around northern Germany, we'll be visiting the states of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, Schleswig-Holstein and Niedersachsen, as well as two of Germany's three city-states, Hamburg and Bremen. Don't be deceived. While the weather kind of seems okay today, these guys are never far away. To describe the typical Clouds. northern weather, let's use some local terminology. Schmuddelwetter, essentially dirty weather, or sheetwetter. <laughs> yes, that's weather that's, well, sheet. So we're talking sheet. cold, wet, and with a good dose of wind. And what- You absolutely have a lot in common with Northern England. What does the north of Germany actually look like? Well, it's pretty flat and pretty green. There's more than mm. one and a half thousand kilometers of coastline, as well as many islands. More than half the land in the north is used for agriculture. There are very- <laughs> It's crazy, it looks like Northern England as well. There's large companies based here, for example, car and ship manufacturers, and tourism plays a big part in the coastal economy. Wait, what? Is that a beach? You guys have beaches? It's a co oh, of course, the northern coast. Of course you've got be beaches. <laughs> That's me being silly. Because I just think of Germany with like, lo you have loads of borders with lots of countries. And I'm like, beach, beaches. And I'm like, of course, duh. you've got like, co you're, you're, the only coast you have is in the north, right? Of course you've got a beach. But actually, you might not have beaches. You could have, like, there's some places that have coastlines that don't have beaches. So, yeah, it's still surprising. Huh. The northeastern state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern is the least densely populated state in Germany, with just 69 people per square kilometre. But what it lacks in people, it makes up for in lakes. In fact, it boasts Europe's largest landlocked lake district. Nice. Mecklenburg is the only new... <laughs> and you're not so funny, in the north of England, we have an area called the Lake District. A very famous area called the Lake District. So a lot in common, a lot in common. Hosts Europe's largest landlocked lake district. Mechpom is the only new or former East German state in the north of Germany. You can still see a few reminders of this era, for example, in its Plattenbau or prefab architecture and long mm. stretches of FKK nudist beaches. Perhaps the most iconic symbol of German beaches is the Strandkorb or beach basket. It was invented here in Rostock in the late 1800s as a comfortable... That's actually a really nice beach. You've got really nice beaches. What? I don't know what these are though. ...solution for wind-battered tourists on the Baltic coast. Today, you can rent them along much of Germany's coastal areas and islands. Talking of islands, I honestly had no idea that Germany had any islands until I moved here, which is pretty embarrassing considering it has more than 40 of them. You've you have 40 islands? I'm learning new things every day. I, one thing I did not know, 100%. I've never thought about beaches or so whatever. But islands, you have islands. I didn't know you had any islands that were in the German vicinity. I know you. there's German places or islands on the other side of the world because of like colonization or whatever. But you have islands? I didn't, I didn't know that. 
got your more shicky Mickey cool. Zult, where you can do a bit of German celeb spotting, for the best chance of sun, head to Fehmarn or Rügen, or venture further out to the Helgoland archipelago. Then there's the chain of East Frisian islands, many of which are car-free or car-restricted zones. Right. I've taken the ferry over to one of the larger islands, Nordanei, in order to get a feel for German island life. Ja, hier ist ruhig. Ruhiger wie auf dem Festland. Definitiv entspannter. Man braucht kein Auto. Und ganz gesunde Luft, man schläft ja wie tot. Die ist so ein bisschen alte Welt noch. Im Winter haben wir ein bisschen Ruhe, jetzt haben wir ein bisschen Trubel. Ne? Da leben wir natürlich von. Hier hat man Ruhe, Sportbewegung. Die Work-Life-Balance ist einfach fantastisch. Ah. This is also a really rich area for biodiversity. The Wattenmeer is the world's largest unbroken system of intertidal sand and mudflats, and a large part of it is found along Germany's North Sea coast. It's a vital site for migratory birds, and it's home to numerous plant species and animals like seals and harbour porpoises. Who knew? One thing that connects all the northern states is language. Low German, known as Plattdeutsch or Niederdeutsch, is an officially recognized and protected regional language. It's descended from Old Saxon and it has many different local dialects, such as... So isn't Old Saxon... Saxon Old Saxon... Doesn't English also come from Old Saxon? So is this a more English-sounding version of German? I don't know. Maybe? I don't know. Let me know in the comments section. Hamburger Platt and Mecklenburgisches Niederdeutsch. While High German has been encroaching steadily since the 1950s, Platt is still widely spoken among the older generation, and efforts have been made to preserve the language, for example with radio shows and lessons in schools. And some young people are mm. also keen to keep their linguistic heritage alive. Moin Leflu, Moin Leflu, Moin Leflu, ich bin Dieke und für das werde ich Plattdeutsch dünnen. Ja, yeah, ich bin Dieke, ich bin 22 Jahre alt, ich komme aus Auerg oder aus Südbrockmanland in der Nähe von Auerg und mittlerweile lebe ich hier auf der Insel Nähe. Ich glaube, das Plattdeutsche ist einfach wirklich super natürlich und es wird einfach frei Schnauze geredet und selbst die bösesten Schimpfwörter klingen irgendwie lustig und man, man, ja, man nimmt es nicht, nicht übel. Es ist halt in der Vergangenheit eben häufig so gewesen, dass, dass ältere Personen ihren Kindern oder ihren Enkeln das nicht mehr beigetragen gebracht haben, weil es dann immer hieß, die können dann niemals wirklich Hochdeutsch sprechen oder das gab da immer so ein paar Vorurteile in der Vergangenheit und das kann ich halt total widerlegen. Mir hat das sogar eher noch viel gebracht, weil das auch ähnlich zum Englischen zum Teil ist und dadurch ist mir zum Beispiel das Englisch lernen eigentlich. Yeah, I was, and, and to be honest, when I'm listening to his um, accent, the tone, I don't know, the way he's speaking, the sound of his voice, the sound of the, the German that he's speaking, I'm like, it sounds closer to English. Um, I don't know if he's speaking it now, but like, yeah, I don't know, there's something, yeah, I can hear it. Relativ leicht gefallen dann in der Schule. Ja, also es ist eben ein Teil von Ostfriesland und auch ein Teil von Norddeutschland. Das ist eben was, was bewahrt werden muss. Back in the day, Low German was also the Seemannssprache, nautical language and Hansa-Sprache, Hanseatic or trade language. And that's our cue for a little walk down memory lane. The Hanseatic League was an organization of merchant guilds, ports and market towns that dominated trade in Northern Europe from the 13th to the 15th century. And it all began here in Northern Germany. Hansa was a medieval German word for guild or association. And the Hanseatic League was set up in order to protect mutual trading interests, from tax arrangements to defense against pirates. Lübeck and Schleswig-Holstein had easy access to both the North and Baltic seas. It was the hub of the Hanseatic League and one of the most important trading posts in Northern Europe. Many mm. Northern cities like Lübeck, Wismar or Stralsund still wear their Hansestadt or Hanseatic city titles with pride. Have you ever wondered why cars registered in Hamburg have HH number plates? That stands for Hansestadt Hamburg. And here we are in Germany's second largest city. It boasts the third largest harbor in Europe, the largest warehouse district in the world, way more wow. bridges than Venice, and more than a hundred wow. swans, a symbol of the city's historical sovereign status. This northern metropolis is also known for its Reeperbahn red light district. It's the red light district. Oh, saucy, saucy, saucy. <laughs> okay, which city is this? I feel like I've seen this city already. I've visited it in another video um, with the Venice. Striking which, Elbe Philharmonie which concert one is hall. It? And fish, fish, fish. Hamburg is also the... Hamburg, the Yeah, Hamburg. Okay. ...youngest German state with an average age of just over 42. Ah, incidentally, red brick architecture, particularly Backstein Gothic or Brick Gothic, is typical mm -hmm. of Northern Germany. Which so funny because it's quite typical of England as well. We have a lot of red brick 
lacked sufficient natural supplies of building stone. In the north. Anyway, back to the <laughs> fish. Unsurprisingly, seafood is a staple of northern cuisine. An absolute okay. classic is Matias, soused herring. Other traditional... And it's funny because seafood is also a staple of the north of England. <laughs> so much in common, guys. Dishes up north include kol und pinkel, that's kale and smoked sausage, and okay. various hearty soups and stews. Labskaus was originally whipped up from long-lasting ingredients for sailors on long trips at sea. It's kind of a mush of corned beef and potato. If you're lucky, mm. you might get it's some like pickled herring and a fried egg on top. Mm. Fancy something sweet? Allow me to introduce you to one of my all-time favourite German foods, which was invented right here in Hamburg. The Franzbrötchen. Think cinnamon swirl, but even better. That looks good. That actually looks really, really good. And of course, we can't neglect the beer. Exactly which brand you drink depends largely on where you are. Here in Bremen, just as everywhere else, there's plenty of local pride involved. But here in the north, we're generally talking some kind of pilsner. But there's another mm. drink that I've had on my bucket list for ages. Ostfriesen tea. What drink is that? Move over Turkey and Great Britain. Ostfriesland is apparently the tea drinking capital of the world. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We might have to fight over that, guys. I'm sorry. Tea capital. How can you have a tea capital in Germany when in, in, in Britain, we, tea is our national thing. Like We drink tea. Every single... But I, I, do you know what? I don't think I've met a British person yet that doesn't drink tea. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Every single British person I have ever met in my entire life has drinks tea. So I don't know how this place is a tea drinking capital of the world, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to, I'm willing to um, learn. But I don't know if you can beat England for tea consumption. We'll see. The East Frisians drink an average of 300 litres of tea a year. And okay. there's a whole ritual involved. I've come to Lair, the birthplace of East Frisian tea, to get initiated in a traditional tea ceremony. Als erstes braucht man erstmal einen schönen Kluntje. Der kommt zuerst in die Tasse. Dann gießt man den Tee ein. Und das knistert jetzt ein bisschen. Mm. Der Tee ist schön dunkel und kräftig. Das ist ein kräftiger Assam-Tee. Dann braucht okay. man Sahne. Und das machen wir immer okay. entgegen dem Uhrzeigersinn, weil wir beim Tee trinken die Zeit anhalten möchten. <lacht> Und das Ganze nennt sich dann das Wulkje, weil das aussieht wie eine kleine Wolke. Umrühren darf ich nicht, oder? Nein, es wird einfach so in Schichten getrunken. Also man trinkt gleich erstmal so diese sahnige Schicht. Und dann okay. trinkt man langsam eben sich durch bis zum letzten süßen Schluck. Die Menschen haben ja hier früher sehr viel auch draußen gearbeitet. Es war oft schlechtes Wetter, es war kalt, es war nass. Und da war so eine, eine Teepause sehr willkommen, weil der Tee ist schön heiß. Außerdem wird bei der Zubereitung von Tee ja das Wasser abgekocht. Und das war sehr gut, weil das Wasser war oft sehr keimhaltig hier in Ostfriesland. Die Leute wurden krank, okay. wenn die das Wasser so nicht abgekocht getrunken haben. Als Ostfriese wächst man da einfach rein und... Ähm, man weiß eigentlich gar nicht, wie man anders Tee trinken kann. <lacht> okay. Don't be surprised if your host tops you up immediately. Apparently it's commonplace to drink at least three cups. Then you show the... Maybe East Frisians, I think they're the long lost Brits, aren't they? Because I'm looking even at the, at the, the surface and the, everything, the teapot and the, I don't know what that was. It was some sort of bread treat with, 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 uh, dried fruit in it which could be a scone could be um f anything fruit cake it just looks very british in its whole presentation so and she looked like she knew what she was doing with a little just put a little clockwise put a little cream on top make a cloud um yeah okay okay but still tea is british <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> we'll share your fill by placing your teaspoon in your cup Please leave your top tips for Northern Germany in the comments and I'll see you soon as the Meet the Germans road trip continues. Northern Germany. Northern Germany. I need to visit Northern Germany. I did not know you had beaches, number one. That's shocking. And you're the tea capital of the world. How? I don't know. But, and your language sounds a bit English in this presentation, so 
How many of my subscribers? How many of you guys? How many of you guys are from Northern Germany? I'd like to know. How many of you guys from Hamburg? I'd like to know. And um, is it true? Do you find learning English and understanding English easier? Do you think than your Southern counterparts or Western or Eastern? Let me know. Let me know. I'm very very interested. Um, I've got so much of Germany to visit, and I, I don't know. Like you. When you don't know about a place, a place seems much smaller and you kind of group everyone in one box. So when I think of Germany, I just think Germany. But I didn't realize there's a whole different culture and traditions and vibe and language and accents and dialects and, you know, different, different things in different parts of Germany. I don't know, my small, closed-minded mind at one point thought Germany was just all one homogenous group of people but you're not you're, you're you're all unique so this is really interesting guys thank you very much for watching until the next one i will see you very soon